very patient person. Uh, I have a real hard time getting behind a person in town driving the speed limit. <laughs> I hate that. There, there should never be 20 miles an hour. I, can, I, I think I can walk fast. No, I can't. But it seems like it. You know, 30 miles an hour is bad enough, but 20 is just, I'm that ridiculous. I, can your car idle at 20? That's what I thought. I had a car like that one time. You know, put a neutral, it could go 20 miles an hour. Where did he live? That 20 mile an hour down there. You know, you guys live in Buffalo. I'm not a very patient person. That just kills me. And in Westville, there's a cop that'll give you a ticket for 25. Yeah. I know. Patience is a hard thing. We really to to wait on something and wait on it and wait on. You know, I've been in. My wife and I go to the store. And I'm probably getting ahead of myself and messy, but we'll get in line. We'll walk down through the lines and we'll look. There'll be 20 people in this line, 15 people in this line, oh. two people in this line. We think, okay, we get behind the two. The other 15 go before we get. We never pick the right line, never. <laughs> slow, slow. If you want to look at, did I tell you turn to James Shepherd? You can look at verse, start with verse 7, but I want to read you a little poem. The poem's title is Don't Quit. It says, when things go wrong as they sometimes will, I think we'll take that most of the time. All the time, well. Okay. When the way you're trudging is all uphill, when the funds are low and the debts are high, you want to smile, but you have to sigh. When cares are pressing you down a bit, rest if you must, but don't quit. Life is queer with its twists and turns, as every one of us sometimes learns. And many a failure turns about when you might have wanted me to stuck it out. Don't give up though the pace seems slow, you might succeed with another blow. Our goal is nearer than it seems to faint. Our goal is nearer than it seems to a faint and faltering man. Uh, I don't know if you, I used to run track. I had a buddy of mine that ran cross country. Right. Those guys are nuts. <laughs> cross country runners are nuts. Mick was nuts. We drank like fish, smoked like and he ran cross country. I ran I ran 224, 40 short hurdles, you know, that kind of thing. The mile was not my I don't like that. Half a mile. All my all my bad living caught up with me. Even as a kid. Mick was also a pole vaulter. I don't think you folks have ever tried pole vaulting it. You have to be even crazier. You know? I tried that. I couldn't get and I was skinny back then. I couldn't get my skinny bottom across the top of that. <laughs> trick to that. Mick said the trick was don't quit. Don't quit. Cross country, same way. Don't quit. Well, the other race is the same way. Don't quit. You, you've got to put something into it. Okay? Don't quit. Often the struggler has given up when he might have captured the victor's cup. He learned too late when the night slipped down how close he was to the golden crown. There was a lady that was swimming the English Channel, and when she first attempted it, the weather turned bad. It got stormy and real foggy. Now you know they, they have a, a boat that follows those swimmers, <coughs> all right? 
their coach is in that boat. And the coach kept telling her, keep swimming, keep swimming, keep swimming. Yeah. She said, I'm tired. I'm tired and I can't see. When she gave up, she was about 55 feet from shore. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh. She quit. The reason she quit was she couldn't see. If she could have seen the shore, yeah. she probably would have kept going. Mm. But she couldn't see, and she couldn't mentally make herself do that. Sometimes we get, as Christians, sometimes we sit down and say, that's it. Mm -hmm. We're tired. Mm -hmm. You ever heard the saying, I'm tired of being tired? Amen. Mm -hmm. Been there, right? Tired of being tired. Sick of being sick. Yeah. But don't give up. Don't give up. Success is failure turned inside out. The silver tin of the clouds of doubt. You never can tell how close you are. It may be near when it seems far. So stick to the fight when your hardest hit. It's when things seem worse that you must quit. <laughs> I don't know. I, I know a preacher that was driving down the road in Hammond and he seen two little boys fighting. Now, one of the boys was much bigger than the other little boy, but both young boys. And as he was driving down the street and he was watching this big kid, he was just stomping this little kid to no end. I mean, just stomping him bad. And the preacher thought, you know what, I just I can't let that go on. So he stopped his car and he got out and he walked over and, and he went to separate him. And when he went to separate him, the little kid looked at him and said, oh, don't stop us, mister. I haven't got my second wind yet. <laughs> And the preacher backed up and said, okay, to make a long story short, the little fellow whipped him. <laughs> it just took time. Did he take a beat? Yeah. Yeah. But the big guy quit. All right? And listen, Satan's going to kick on you and stomp on you, and if, if there's something that aggravates you, that's what he's going to use. If it's me telling jokes, he's going to use that. There's people that don't like me telling jokes. I've got to do a, 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 I've been contacted by a good friend of mine, he's not his wife, we do their funeral, and she said, I want you to do it, and don't joke. Oh. Uh, um. <laughs> I'm going to be in trouble, you know that. Because oh, yeah. somewhere during that funeral, I'm going to have to joke. I'm going to have to, uh, I'm going to be in trouble. But her husband was a great guy. He loved to joke. Uh, yep. uh, don't joke. I told you before, if the Lord took my joking and my coffee away, I might as well just croak. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> right. James 2, 1 James chapter 5 with me. Be patient, brother. Be patient, folks. That's our, that's our thought, all right? James chapter 5, look at verse 7. Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husband waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth, and hath long patience for it, until he receive the early and latter rain. Be ye also patient, establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. Grudge not. Please listen to this. Grudge not one against another, brethren, lest you be condemned. Behold, the judge standeth before the door. Take, my brethren, the prophet who have spoken in the name of the Lord for an example of suffering, affliction, and patience. Behold, we count them happy which endure. You've heard of the patience of Job and have seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. But above all things, my brethren, swear not, neither by heaven, neither by the earth, neither by any other oath, but let your yea be yea, your nay be nay, lest you fall into condemnation. Pray with me for just a moment. Father, I wrote your path on grace. I thank you, Heavenly Father, for your precious Son, Jesus. I thank you for your word, for Heavenly Father, that you would send it out and it would accomplish.
accomplish what you would have it to accomplish this morning. I ask, Father, for preaching grace, for ready remembrance of your word. I ask, Father, for the forgiveness of my sins and shortcomings. Just make me a pure and clean vessel to use in your service this morning. And Father, I'll be very, very careful to give Jesus the praise and the honor and glory for all things. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I want to tell you a little story. I love this. This guy walks into a doctor's office, walks up to the receptionist's desk. She says, what have you got? He said, Shingles. She took down his name, his address, his medical insurance number, and told him to have a seat. They sit down. About 15 minutes later, the nurse comes up to him, says, What do you got? He said, Shingles. She took him down to the room, his height, weight, uh, medical history, put him in an examining room. <laughs> Half an hour later, another nurse comes in, asks him what he had. He said, Shingles. She gives him a blood test, blood pressure test, electrocardiogram, told him to take off all of his clothes, put on the robe, wait for the doctor. The doctor came in and said, what do you got? He said, shingles. He said, where? He said, out on the truck. <laughs> <laughs> that guy's going to be one of two things, very patient or stupid. <laughs> Be bad to get a doctor's bill delivered. <laughs> ah, life was full of gotta wait, gotta wait. Traffic, doctors all dentists, all grocery stores. I don't care where. Uh, listen, we we get upset. People get upset. They look around the world and they get angry and they say, Lord, why don't you just come back? People say, Why don't you just come back? You know why he doesn't come back? You know why? It says that the Lord is long suffering, not willing that any should perish, but all, all should be saved. All come to redemption. So he's waiting. Because you see, one of these days he's going to look at his son. Say, okay, boy, go get him. Too late then. Too late then. But right now, he's patient. He's given us opportunity to tell other people, and other people come to him. Right? Wait. As far as I know, Y'all are safe, but if you're not, it might be waiting for you. Wouldn't it be odd? Can you imagine what it must be like for the last person to get saved right before the Lord comes back? Somewhere in eternity, the Lord would say, okay, this is the one. After this one saved, you don't think he knows that? Yeah, he does. Yeah. He does. When that one's saved, Go get it. It's an eerie thought. Yeah? Somebody comes over and gets saved and all of a sudden, shoo, we're all gone. Whoa. 23 of 9, it's going to happen. Take a look at Revelations 22 and 20 with me. 22 and 20. He which testifieth these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. I don't, I don't like to do that. You know, I've been told all my Christian life, oh, you ought to pray for the Lord to come back right now. I, I will agree with that. We're, we probably are supposed to. But you know what bothers me is because I, I have people that I love that I don't think saved and I want to see him saved before he comes back. Amen. I may stand before him one of these days and say, how come you didn't ask me to come back? And I'll say, because my son and my daughter and my granddaughter and my great grandkid, somebody wasn't saved. Mm -hmm. No. I don't want you to come back yet. I listen. 
listen, I believe with all my heart he's coming. I don't know when. I don't know when. But I want everybody that can be to be saved. Patience. He's got a lot of patience with us. A lot of patience. And I, you got more patience than I, than I have. Our text says, consider. Let me go back to. Uh, let me go back to James chapter five. Be patient, there, brother. Come in, Lord. Behold, the husband, the farmer. We'll give you a little st st statistics. Uh, this was some years ago now, so it's probably different. But a study was done in an agricultural island. It's reported that to, to produce a hundred bushels of corn from an acre of land. It takes 4 million pounds of water, 6,800 pounds of oxygen, 5,200 pounds of carbon, 160 pounds of nitrogen, 125 pounds of potassium, 75 pounds of yellow sulfur, and a lot of other elements too numerous to mention. In addition to those things, it requires rain, and sunshine at the right time. I, now, they did some figure. Only 5% of the produce, those 100 bushels, is attributed to the farmer's labor. grew up out in the country from before sunlight till after dark on a tractor them boys plowing and planting. Five percent of what they got was attributed to all of their work all day, half the night. Five percent. The greatest percentage of the crop depended on rain and sunshine. Guess who that comes from? God. We say, man, we want to see more people saved. And somebody says, work! Get out and go get them. Go! We ought to be doing that, but I'm going to tell you something. It says the Lord added unto the church daily such as should be saved. You know whose job it is to add people to this church? Oh, ours. Come on, whose job is it? Ours. God's job, not ours. God's job. We can't add them. God's job. Our job is just to do whatever we are supposed to do. That's it. God does the rest. Amen. Patience. Patience. Where my wife and I are from, there's a lot of farms along the Wabash River. Yeah. You folks know anything about the Wabash River? Floods a lot. Used to flood a lot. Yes. Some of them people would put in as many as three crops a year. They'd put a crop in, flood would come take it out. Put another crop in, flood would come take it out. Maybe another crop in, flood come take it out. If they can get it in, that soil is so rich, if the flood will leave it alone, they make enough to put that thing in two or three times. But they've got to keep working at it. Don't give up. They have to be patient. I don't like planting a garden more than once. I plant, when I first came up here, I tried planting the garden. I sat in my bedroom and opened the bedroom and shot at birds and everything else that was trying to get. They still ate everything in there just about. I swear, I think we got a, a tomato plant and that was about it. I don't know what else we got out of that thing. Oh, I'm not joking, that was terrible. <laughs> Them daggone scorching birds up, birds up north here, nuts. <laughs> I didn't want to plant that thing again. Okay? Didn't want to. Listen, it's a weight. 
During the 1960 presidential election, John F. Kennedy used this story to close a lot of his speeches. I'm going to have to read it to you because I don't, can't remember. Uh, but in 1780, May 19th, 1780, uh, there was a man by the name of Colonel Davenport. He was the Speaker of the Connecticut House of Representatives. The sky got so bad, darkened so bad, it looked so bad, that the people were looking out the window saying, it must be the end of the world. And Colonel Davenport said, I'm whether the Lord is coming or not. If he comes, we can't stop him. He's going to take us. I suggest that we go get some candles and continue doing business. Now listen. Sometimes things get so dark around us that we're going to say, <laughs> No sense in doing anything. It hurts too much. I'm too hungry. I don't have any money. Nobody likes me. What, put, the, put whatever difficulty you're having. Okay? Whatever. Well, we just got to keep going. Yeah. Just got to keep going. All right. One of the things I learned when I, I used to be not quite so. <laughs> One of the things I learned about around the track is don't quit. We had a boy by the name of Charlie Black. Uh, I, don't know if, I don't know if you've ever heard of the Van Arsdale boys. They, uh, they end up in pro ball. But I ran track against the Van Arsdale boys. All right. They were good, good track runners. And Charlie was our fastest runner. Charlie had a special talent. What he, what he could run the first quarter, however fast he could run that first quarter, he could run the other, the other three quarters the same speed. He didn't slow down. He was good. He beat a lot of guys. But not the Van Arsdale boys. When we ran against those boys, those boys always ran behind Charlie on the last lap. Charlie couldn't run any harder. He put his whole heart into it, everything he had. That last lap, here comes the Van Arsdale boys. And you could just see Charlie, he, was want, he wanted to put more, but he didn't have it. That was it. Look, folks, some of us are like Charlie. We put everything in it we have, and we still feel like everybody's passing us up. Keep at it. Keep at it. you got to be the best we can be for the Lord, doing whatever God wants us to do. I don't care what it is. I don't care what it is. But be patient. Be patient. We may not agree on everything. We may not do everything the same way. But be patient. Okay? Be patient. Uh, take a look at Second Peter with me, chapter 3. Second Peter, chapter 3. Start with verse 10. My, I think my the bad back curse. <laughs> <laughs> I'm beginning to learn some things. We got out of the, the car this morning. I picked up her coffee and reached out to her to hand it to her so she didn't have to lean in and get it. And she looked at me and grinned and she said, Thank you, you're beginning to realize what it's like to have a messed up back, aren't you? I said, Yes. Well, I understand that. You know? Little things. We're over at my daughter's house the other day. They unloaded a mattress, box springs, and dresser, and I stood there watching. <laughs> Not that I wanted to. I 
Lynn wouldn't let me. Leave it alone. All right? Leave it alone. And sometimes you can't do something. Let somebody else do it. We need to be patient. Patient. Man. Be patient. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 10. But they alone will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heaven shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works of their end shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in all holy conversation? By that, what? By the way, that word conversation, that means manner of life. In all holy manner of life and godliness, looking for and hastening into the coming of the day of God, where the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with a fervent heat. How are we supposed to act? The same way every day. I like that. I can't remember what committee. Was it Philip Wilson that you say what you see is what you get? I don't remember. Okay. As Christians, we ought to be the same way. We ought to be people that do things for the Lord. All right? Amen. But we ought to be the same way all the time. Now, that's not going to happen. That's in a perfect world. <coughs> But we should, you know, when I used to still smoke my cigars, I, I used to teach Travis, you know, he'd be out here mowing grass. That was back when we were still smoking. He'd throw away. Those weren't stubs to me. Those were good. I used to smoke the blunts, and they were only about this long to start with. All right? Travis would throw away a cigar that was almost a blunt to me. I said, what are you doing? I'd be out there in the grass. Look, no. <laughs> But when I smoke cigarettes, I used to tell the church, I don't want you to get shocked if you see me uptown with a cigar. Bad for me? Yes. Sin? To you? Maybe. I didn't quit smoking because I'm a preacher. I didn't quit smoking because God laid some big religious thing on my heart. I quit smoking because I couldn't breathe. That's the only reason I quit smoking. I quit drinking because God wanted me to, but not smoking. <laughs> If, if I could breathe, I'd probably still be smoking, but I can't. I couldn't climb, couldn't do a lot of things. Quit that. All right. Be for real. Be for real. I want you to be like everybody else. Just be what God wants you to be. That's it. That's it. When Walt used to work at the mall, he used to go in the mall, my wife would go for a walk, go walk back to by the place where Walt worked, walk back. Oh man, Walt! I don't want everybody to know that. No. <laughs> he would yell at me. Hey, preacher! <laughs> oh shoot! Now I can't get mad at anybody. I can't. No, I'm just messing. I'm just messing. All right. Listen, the Lord's coming back. Amen. Don't be patient, okay? Don't, don't grumble and swear. There are places in Mexico where they have hot and cold springs in the same place. All right? There are there are people there that would literally go there to wash clothes. They have hot water to wash them in, cold water to rinse them in. There was a from from our United States part that went down there and was watching these ladies do that. And he was talking to all the locals and he said. Man, he said, they must not complain at all. They've got hot water to wash them in and cold water to rinse them in. And the fellow said, oh, they complain. And the guy said, what world for? And he said, because God didn't supply any soap here. <laughs> okay. Now, you ladies be easy on me when I tell you this joke. <laughs> There was a lady that bought a very expensive new line of cosmetics. Now, you know that there are some things that are supposed to do this, they're supposed to do that, they're supposed to make your eyelids do this. She bought this whole line of cosmetics, spent hours and hours sitting in front of the mirror applying everything. 
And finally, she asked her husband, she said, well, honey, honestly, what age do I look now? Now, us men know Logan. <laughs> so he looked at her and said, well, hon, judging from your skin, 20. Your hair, 18. Your figure, 25. She said, oh, you're so sweet. He said, wait a minute, I'm not through adding them up yet. <laughs> <laughs> Friend said you're gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> Ernie said it was Tammy Faye that bought the cosmetics. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this patience, patience. Wait, that might make a lady swear. <laughs> we're not supposed to do that. All right, we're not supposed to do yeah. that. Listen to that. I told you one of the reasons that I started trying to, to watch what I eat a little better is when I went to the doctor's office. Remember I told you that? They had me take my shirt off, my t-shirt off, I sat down on the examining table. And I told you they should not have mirrors in the doctor's office. <laughs> <laughs> Walt, there was a mushroom sitting there with a head on it. <laughs> me! <laughs> Oh, I'm going to have to do something about this. All right. Philippians chapter 2 with me. Start with verse 14. It says, do everything without complaining or arguing. Or... Let me, Philippians chapter 2, start with verse 14. Do all things without murmuring and disputings, that you may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world. I did tell you the story, I think, about the policeman that pulled this lady over. She'd been, you know, somebody cut her off and she rolled down her window and started cussing and screaming and yelling at her and just had enough of it. This policeman. <laughs> well, this policeman pulled her over. And he said, can I see the registration to the vehicle, please, and your driver's license? And she said, was I speeding? He said, no. She said, did I run a stop sign? He said, no. Make an illegal turn. No, man, may I see your license and registration? She said, yeah. So she gets out and hands it to him. He said, he hands it back and said, okay. She said, why did you stop me? And he said, well, the bumper sticker says, follow me to church. But you were screaming and cussing and carrying on. And I thought maybe you stole the car. Oh, <laughs> that's good. <laughs> we need to act like Christians. Okay? Sometimes it's hard. My wife will tell you, this has been a long time ago. But I chased the car into a parking lot. God, I don't know how many people were in it. I didn't care. I was mad. When I'm mad, I'm stupid. Uh, tried to get them to get out of the car. And they tried to drive off, and I ran after them and went to kick them. <laughs> I went to kick the car. That's a dumb thing to do when you're running. You know that? A lot of them fall in your... <laughs> dumb. Sometimes we don't act for a Christ life. Okay. We just... We don't. Speaking oaths, uh, you know, we, we shouldn't, we don't have to argue about why we're Christians, we just have to act like it. Okay, last thing. I want you to remember Job, our tech member now. I couldn't imagine what it would be like. I've lost money twice. I've lost everything I've had twice. Ooh, I've nothing. I'd live at somebody else's house and somebody else's food, use somebody else's gas to drive. Amen. I know what that's like. Amen. Twice. But I've never lost any children, thank God. Job lost everything he had and 
kids. All of them. And he said, I came into this world without nothing. I can leave the world without nothing. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. My wife and I had some friends, Bill and Brenda Whitman. They had a child born, had a lot of problems. I think that baby was what, about six weeks old, then maybe. Eight weeks old, not very old. I can't remember if the child ever got out of the hospital or not. But Bill came by the house one night to drop their other child off. They had to make an emergency run to the hospital. When they came back, that baby passed away. I don't know what to say to Bill. You know what Bill told me? The Lord gives. My wife and I carried that child in its casket in our car. I don't think he could do that now. It's probably not me. We took that child from here to the funeral. I don't think I could have done that. I don't think I could have been Bill and said, God gave. I've got a brother I've never seen. Never seen. He died before he was born. One of these days he didn't get seen. Amen. One of these days. I'm kind of looking forward to that. Never had a brother. I have a sister. Job was an amazing man. Did he get aggravated? Yeah. Hurt? Yeah. But he said God is in control. Amen. A lot of things I don't understand. Somebody comes to me one time, a lot of times, you know, they come to preachers and they think we've got all the answers. I've got news for you. There is an answer. His name is Jesus. And that's as far as I can go. Other than that, God's got to take care of it. I don't know anything else. Are you hurting? God can take care of that. Are you angry? God can take care of that. God can't do that. You know something else that Job said? Job said he didn't care if he died and the worms ate his body dead with own eyes. I'm going to see the Lord. Amen. Amen. He's coming. He's coming. Some of you folks, maybe there's some folks here, I don't know if some of you folks like prophecy or not. My son-in-law loves prophecy. I believe in prophecy. I don't preach it very much. I told Alan, I said, I have a hard enough time living from day to day. Yeah. <laughs> Lord, help me take care of Sunday. This yeah. is, I'm having a hard enough time today. Mm -hmm. All right. If you're coming back next month, that's fine. Next year, that's fine. Ten years from now, that's fine. Mm -hmm. But let me take care of today. Yeah. Yeah. You know what the model prayer says? Give us this day next year's bread. No, or daily. No. Today. Today. So be patient. Keep doing what God wants you to do. So be patient. Okay. Be patient. Brother Bob, would you bring us up? Invitation. Don't understand. There's 81, just as I am. 81. <laughs>